I want to welcome everybody to the first video in this series of this ST70 rejuvenation. This is not really so much a repair. I had done several years ago a multi-part series on the repair of this unit in depth. I will link to it up here on the top right. I encourage you to watch it if you're interested to see how I did all of the tests and everything to get this amplifier working. What I plan on doing here is I have purchased a bunch of parts, primarily the new stainless steel polished chassis to include a bunch of other pieces and items that I will go through in the unboxing. And I'm going to be removing everything from this chassis. I'm going to be resurfacing, cleaning, repainting the transformers, making them really nice. And I'm gonna be bringing everything over to new one, rewiring it very much like when you would have a brand new kit. And I'm gonna walk my way through each one of those processes as I do it. Effectively from these components and those other components making a brand new ST70. So that's gonna be what this project is. So stick around and we're gonna get into the unboxing portion of the parts that have arrived for this project next. And today I am joined by my friend Elvis who has come all the way from the Black Forest. Say hello. Hello to see the unboxing of the parts that have arrived from, doesn't show the name, but I think it's uh, Dynakit or Dynaco Parts, or I'll, I'll put the name up top here. From Kevin. It's from, it's from Kevin. Kevin from Paramus. And I wanna, I wanna point out that I, I previously purchased some parts already from Kevin from Paramus. Again, I, I, will, I will post the link above to where I'm getting these parts from. And I have ordered from him before. So this is what we're going to use to rebuild the amplifier. We'll see if Elvis approves. Okay, let's see what we got. Ladies and gentlemen, we have styrofoam, uh, clearly well packed. It is Dynakit, so they can see. This is Dynakit. I've ordered parts from them before uh, over the past, I don't know how many years, a long time. And I got some, some special things. I'll, I'll point out that this is all in support, again, of the upgrade and, and re-chassising, if you would, from, from the old patina chassis that I've used on the amp to this beautiful, absolutely beautiful and exquisite stainless steel chassis that is uh, silk screened, as we can see. Now we will attempt to open this up. I didn't plan on opening it, but there seems to be goodies inside. Continue trying to open this. With, with wow, this, this is something. And, and I can see here that on the sides, there's still the protective coating and he has the, the screws and he's gonna make us work for it. The protective coating is also on the bottom. So I can see there's a hat in here, and it looks as though all the other parts that I've ordered. I've seen some knockoffs on eBay, but the quality looks like it, the quality looks like it was cut out with the Dremel. <laughs> it's really bad. I mean, I've done some prototypes with the Dremel on, on an uncut chassis, and I, I see the value in prototyping. And there we go, we got a, got a nice hat here. Very cool. And here's what I've ordered. So now we'll get down to the nuts and bolts. So this is going to be the, the kit for the rear. I've opted not to have the screw down posts for the back. I also don't need 16 ohm. So this is gonna be two on each side. And this I believe is gonna be basically how we're gonna set it up is for four and eight ohm. So that's what this is, four, eight in the ground. It also comes with the, uh, the board in the back to support this obviously. It's a complete kit. So that's gonna be an, an upgrade to the unit. The complete screw kit. Uh, I'm not gonna use any of the old screws. I'll, I'll keep that for spares for other projects I have. All of my screws are, are rusted and nasty. So that's, that's done. No charge, some isolation, rubber standoffs and grommets. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm not gonna go in and read this yet, but I, I will read this separately as I get into each individual kit. This is just a uh, unboxing. I've been given this for free. Uh, we will see what this is for, maybe, I believe, for a transformer, I would imagine, to isolate a transformer off the chassis, but don't quote me yet, I'm guessing. I have ordered uh, replacement switches. Mine I had glued together. 
uh, just get the other one going and said that I would replace the switches down the road. These are those switches. That's all that is. Not a kit, just the switches. These are the rubber feet uh, that come with this chassis, I, I believe it to be, and, and some grommets as well for the power plug and what have you. This is a kit where I, I went back and forth. I decided to get it. I was going to go with it. This addresses a shortcoming with the ST70, allowing for uh, biasing individually each tube on each side respectively. So you could have uh, a bias, which would be a contribution of both tubes on each side for, the, for how, how much it draws. This one, in fact, will allow you to, to bias each tube individually. So more on this later. A previous purchase I'll just get into right quick because I'm just going to be dropping it right into the set. This was some emergency work that I originally purchased for this uh, project. Two new bias pots uh, from the same company. So those will be joining this. These are different from these bias pots. These are the ones that are going to go up front. So it still needed that. And then we have a new input jack kit with gold RCA terminals and a new board. Mine are all eaten up. There's nothing left of them. I've dropped everything back in here so I do not lose it. I got to get those uh, transformers off of the old amplifier. Going to have to bring them down to Jason's and sandblast them and paint them after I prime them. Get them all nice looking and then they'll be uh, ready to start transferring that portion over to this amp as we get underway with this amplifier conversion. So yeah, this concludes the unboxing. some tubes. Now we can begin. Before I go pulling out the transformers, which is a, one of my first tasks, it may not be entirely evident what color is what anymore. While I have ways to figure out uh, on, on these transformers if I should get lost in the color codes, how to figure it out, it may just be a good idea to actually mark these before I remove them. I'm going to color the ends with Sharpies. Now, it could be argued that black and brown are evident, but could you really tell which one is orange and yellow? And that's good enough. Ultimately, this portion of the cable is going to be cut off anyway because this part of the cable has oxidized, but I will know exactly what goes where. I'm going to do this now on the other audio output transformer. Now I've dressed the inputs of the audio transformer over here we have blue, white, and blue. Also the choke over here, which I, I probably am going to replace anyway, but that's just brown. That's easy to identify. The red center taps coming off of each audio transformer identified right here. Same on the other side. Now I'm just gonna snip these right out. No desoldering required. On the power transformer, the green pairs are readily identifiable. There's no need to remark these. These two wires here were red at some point. Six and four to the rectifier. Eight and two are white. What I'm going to do with them is just not do anything with them. They just look like faded wires. I haven't touched them. It means they have no color. Here's a black wire. Obviously it goes to the fuse. We can see it's black, but I'm marking it just to say it's counted for. And the other one is down here, just out of the field of the camera. This one goes to the power switch. This right here going to the selenium rectifier is a red blue. So I'm just filling in some of that red here. It's a shorter cable. Got a red yellow coming off of here to the star ground. We could see 
I'm just gonna have to make a, a red yellow effigy here with whatever red I can muster up out of this garbage marker. Again, distance also reveals its location as well. I have to cut this one very close. As the greens were well pronounced on one side for the heaters, the browns are well pronounced on this side for the heaters. So I'm simply going to, to cut these where they stand. I do believe at this point we have all of the transformers cut out of circuit except for the choke, which doesn't matter right now. So we're going to remove these transformers one by one and just get them out of here. The power transformer provides some serious ballast and balance for this unit, so it's likely the candidate to remove first. It'll be the easiest to work with. I could still stand this up with the uh, audio transformers and everything, so we're gonna take that out first. Nothing relatively special about the removal. It's flathead, securing the nut from the bottom. There is an intermediary nut as well as a standoff. And we can see that one spinning. That's the one that actually holds the transformer together, but we're not really concerned about that one. We just want the transformer out of the, out of the uh, unit itself. Once you get a few turns on it though, you can just remove the nut from the bottom. You need to turn the screw from the top, such as this. Then the lock washer way back there. Then it's rinse, wash, and repeat. Ideally, you really want to get these first because these are the ones that are also holding the cables into place. I want to leave this one alone in the bottom as it's holding nothing. I want to get these out. These should be the priority because I want to get these cables unloomed because as I hold this and remove it, I don't want to snag any cables and break anything. We can see now tension is released from the cables. This is important. Get this one next. And finally, the one that's holding everything in now. I realize I still have these two wires connected to the um, capacitor here. This is why I keep checking. And I miss these two because the schematic doesn't show a color code for them. In actuality, they are the center taps for the heaters, the brown one and the green one. You can hardly tell the colors that are on those wires. What I'm really going to do, just so I'm not going to lose track of them once they're all disconnected, is I'm going to go and assign them an alternate color. So this is going to get a purple, and this will get like an aqua green. Obviously not standard. But for this video, it's going to do. I can refer back to it. Okay, now I verified and pulled back every connection. I'm confident now I can remove that last screw. I'm going to have to support it as I do it uh, because the transformer will fall out. I'm going to have to be very careful. Let's start by just breaking tension. That's good enough. Hold it up. I'm just turning it out. It's actually held in by the screws. Very nice. So we'll pull this out and get all the hardware out. The cables are, are rather rigid, so there we go. Out. I'm going to curve it. Very slowly. Don't want to break nothing. There's one group, one cable at a time. This is not part of it. Transformers completely removed, no damage whatsoever. I'll put this off to the side. We'll remove the other two. They should go much easier. And I'm going to do the top one since the bottom one is holding up the, the chassis. makes it really easy. I'm going to turn this off to the side. We'll have a look. Same setup as before. And there's nothing. There are no looms. Broken tension on all four screws. Now I'm just gonna just try and turn them out by hand. Check all the cabling. I slowly drill out one side at a time. Nothing is caught. There we go, one transformer. So now I'll just loosen tension on these screws right here.
We have stripped off all that we need to strip off from the old chassis today. Now I'll be unfastening these covers from these transformers. The bottom one on this one is really not exposed. This one could really be cleaned up and put back in in place. Not worth bending all these wires over. I, I think I'm going to leave that one alone. Everything within this transformer looks absolutely fine. These you can't escape. Both sides have to be done. Very carefully bending the wires to get through the holes. Remove that cover. Same thing as here, just, just guiding them through. <sighs> Everything looks fine. Rinse, wash, repeat. Everything looks good. Here we have everything all stripped on the table, inspected, ready to go. This project's coming along real nice. I'm now gonna take all these covers, go down to Jason at Jason's Bug Ranch, throw these on the sand blaster, have all of the old paint removed. Let's get rolling. Yep, we're here live at Jason's Bug Ranch where we are going to be sandblasting these covers and painting them, making them all nice and pretty. Sandblaster will meet its first contestant. We're gonna do the uh, power transformer. Okay, here are the parts out of the sand blaster. Everything came out real nice, took out everything. We're gonna try out some paint here from the shop and see what we can do with these. Uh, if it adheres nicely, comes out nice, we'll just go with it, call it a day, and consider these parts finished. Pieces are soaking in an industrial degreaser. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually scrub these, get any pieces of sand out and what have you, uh, after which I'll be uh, putting some baling wire on. I've already scrubbed this one. This is just the final rinse I've already got my baling wire loosely fitted around it using the most inconspicuous of locations Obviously for these can be that bottom hole Yeah, I do the first batch of paint didn't go too well. It was simply too windy, uh, too much dust in the shop. Uh, I'm stripping them down. I'm going to repaint them. No harm, no foul. Also, I didn't want to use a primer paint or combination. I'm going to separate primer and painting. I decided to go with a glossy but textured finish and that way it would cover up all the uh, pitted rusted spots that were in here instead of having to sand and fill it's got sort of a, a leathery look to it we can see that I'm gonna let this dry we'll see how it comes out all of the other ones are too just like this nice and matching uh, the glossy really captured every single flaw and dent that was in all this metal and now we have this so we'll see what comes of it so here's a view from indoors obviously still wet but just give a glimpse of what we got here. We're gonna let this dry. Here's another alternative I've been looking at. I can go with chrome, use threaded rod, cut it to size. I'm gonna be applying a protective covering to both sides of the transformer on the outside uh, so I'm able to prepare this metal here for painting. 
I'm just gonna be covering it with a piece of paper and then putting masking tape around it. And this is what we're going for. We're just trying to protect the uh, coil inside the covering and that paper. That's it, so we're able to clean this up and paint it. Now we're gonna be removing the rust. I'm gonna be using a wheel on the Dremel, low speed, and we're going to be cleaning at intervals with some spirits. Trying to get in between the individual sheets of metal. It's working very nicely. See the contour coming back into the metal now. Now that all the rust has been removed with the wire brush. Finished and painted and on to the next. Here's a uh, before and after. So we can see the difference in uh, the result here. Transformers are done. We'll wait for them to dry. We'll be putting them back into the shells. Split these threaded rods in half. These are six inch rods. Got one, gotta make two more. Uh, these right here are going to need to be very precise because there's very little margin on these acorn nuts. And if it's a little too much, then they're gonna lock down, it's gonna be slack and they're not gonna tighten. A little too little, and yeah, I'm gonna have a problem. So. We're going to be using uh, something like this right here on the Dremel and take off a couple of turns till we find the optimum size. The good news is, is that once we do find the optimum size, we can measure uh, right down to the millimeter all the other ones against it and cut exactly where we need to. Switch gears here for a minute as I open up some more parts that have arrived from Dynakit. So, very quick unboxing. So first order of business, I did get a new choke. So that's what this is right here. Just want to point out right quick, my choke was uh, leaking everywhere from all the heat over the years. I, I didn't like it, even though it worked. We could do some comparative testing between those two, but that's gonna be interesting. I, I just want to say that the new one's going in the new build. And here I have all new uh, octal sockets, as well as the improved nylon bushings that are gonna be used for the transformers, that's why it's relevant right now. And these are those bushings. So this is what we're gonna use for the build. We're gonna start with the assembly of the first transformer, but this is only for sizing because we're going to need uh, further adjustments of these custom uh, screws here that we're making. But we're gonna remove the masking tape. So the covers have one side that has no Dynaco emblem stamped into it. That's gonna be for the back. The back is going to be the ones with the short wires for the outputs. So these are gonna be uh, weaved back in on this side. And obviously the one that says Dynaco A470 will be for the front side. With everything assembled, I can now make a mark 
I'll be able to cut these rods to the final size. Look at that half a centimeter, about five turns. Head back to the Dremel. Let's try this again. Yeah, that may do it. We'll try it out, we'll give it a shot. If that's good, we're gonna use that size. It looks like that will be sufficient. I see it biting down on the nylon. I could probably loosen that back a bit. That tells me I could cut the other three to that size. I'm gonna loosen this now and use this as the standard. The output transformers are all cut to the same size. We're gonna assemble these now. This transformer is now finished. There is nothing left to do. It is ready to go back into the chassis. We're gonna do the other one in the exact same manner. Now both transformers are completed. We'll move over to the power transformer now. The power transformer will also require the cutting of the screws that were made, but to the extent of which is not yet fully understood, I'm going to use the original screws to find out what the distances are and make an approximation as I cut those. We're going to start this process off by placing the cover back on. The lettering is going to phase forward here where the abundance of wire is. The isolation bushings that Dynakit provided uh, free of charge actually requires a longer 832 uh, screw right here. Since I don't know how much longer it has to be, when I get this power transformer installed in the chassis, I will make a determination and what I will do is I will measure up one, I will cut all four, and that will be it. But for now, I'm not gonna cut anything until I know for sure. And with this, I'm gonna say that the transformers are now completed along with the first video in this series on the ST70 restoration. I hope you all enjoyed this video. As soon as the next video is completed, I will post a link right here on the upper right hand side. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, uh, subscribe and hit that bell next to the subscribe button. Again, I hope you all enjoyed this video, found it entertaining and informative. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?